Barry Rosen, a former U.S. diplomat who was one of 52 American hostages held in Iran from 1979 to 1981, joins us now. Thank you so much, Barry, for being here. Really good, appreciate good it. Good to be here with you. Now, uh, Barry, the United Nations is just behind us, and President of Iran, Pezishkian, former Foreign Minister Javad Zarif, and a, a delegation of around four, of up to 40 people, including Pezishkian's children and son-in-law, are all here. If you were to bump into one of them in New York City, what would you say to them? Um, well, the first thing I would say is that I know that President Pezeshian has, has said he wants to see a more humane Iran. There's nothing right now that what I would say is humane. And, and I wouldn't call this, this delegation Iranians. They're members of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and they're not the Iranians that I know who are wonderful, cultured people. And tell us a little bit about your background and your experience and your connection with the real Iranian people. Well, uh, when I was 23 years old, I was in the Peace Corps and I went to Iran. That was the first flight I ever took out of the United States. Spent two years in Iran, traveling all over Iran, teaching Iranian boys and girls. Uh, and uh, that experience really changed my life because I had such deep respect for Iranian culture and history, its poetry and its art. Um, the architecture of Iran is, is superb. It's, it's uh, something that I don't think that one could really, really take in without saying it's a wonder of the world. And the Iranian people, the Mehman Avwazi of Iran is non-comparable anywhere in the world. And can you talk a little bit about what you went through during the hostage crisis? Um, it's, it's a long story, but I, I, I was there in Iran as the press attaché, working with the American ambassador, Ambassador Sullivan, uh, to inform both uh, Iranian uh, news reporters and international press about what was going on during the revolutionary period in Iran. Um, I, I spent a, about a year in Iran before November 4th, 1979. That, on that day, um, we were taken hostage at about 10 o'clock in the morning. It was rainy. And then, before I knew it, um, several hundred people were over the wall and burst into my office. And they said that you're a member of Nesta Spies, Lone Josusun, and then, uh, put me in handcuffs, and then threw me into the kitchen of the ambassador's uh, residence. From there on, I was interrogated, beaten up, and tied up. And then, then, as I was on the floor, I heard uh, Imam Khomeini say, this is, this is the right thing to do, take these Americans as hostages. Once that happened, I knew that I was in trouble for a long time. But throughout the year, between the revolution uh, and November 4th, uh, the American embassy was also taken for one day by, by uh, uh, I think, the, um, a, a group of Irani Iranians who wanted to take over the embassy and, and murder us all. And then we were saved during that day. But that should have been our lesson, uh, that we, we should not have been continuing our relationship with, with Iran at that time. Wow, that's uh, really an incredible story. And the fact that you've been able to retain such a heartfelt connection and really remember the good times and the beauty uh, and the culture of Iran, that's, uh, it takes a bigger person to be able to do that, Barry. Well, I, I, have, I have a lot of respect for Iran, and I don't think, uh, I think, of course, this, this last 45 years has eroded uh, the world's respect for, for Iran. But in my estimation, anybody who really knows a, the culture and the Iranian people will have really great, great respect for them. It's the regime in Iran that I have utter disrespect for. That's an incredible message that you carry with you. Now, what is your message to the U.S. government, who has obviously issued visas for the same establishment that committed these atrocities towards you and the other hostages, and according to the United Nations fact-finding mission, is committing crimes against humanity, against its own people? Several years ago, I uh, I complained against the uh, the attempt to uh, 
bring in a UN ambassador uh, by the name of Abu Taleb, and uh, he was stopped. But I think protocol is almost impossible to to negate, and and they're here, quote legally. But for me, they're not they're not they're not present present in in New York. For me, they're they're alien. And they have the ability, like you said, to stop them. Why don't they? I mean, Iran is considered a state sponsor of terror. The IRGC has been listed as a terrorist entity here in the United States. Does that make any sense to you? No, it doesn't make any sense. But this is the UN, and in many cases, the UN doesn't make any sense. And what about, um, you know, the hotel? They're staying at the Millennium. It's around $1,300 a night. It's probably racking up to be around $50,000 a night, given that it's a delegation of at least 40 people. This is a great vacation for them. Believe me, they love this. They can get out of Iran, relax, have a great meal, see things that they couldn't see in Iran. So this is an excuse to get out. The larger the delegation, the better time they have. They don't care about what's happening at home when the economy is in shambles. There's a water crisis in Iran. There's an electricity crisis. Every possible crisis you can possibly have. And most of all, a human rights crisis. The women of Iran are the valiant heroes of Iran and have always been, and they've been punished severely all for the last two years. And look, the uh, second anniversary of Masa Amini, Amini's death, everybody has to know and recall that, that time and know how the Iranian people were treated. There are so many people still now going through the jails and are being punished. Uh, death penalties are going on all over the place and hanging. So this regime has a lot to pay for. And how does that make you feel? If you could describe it in, in one word that would describe it best, what would that be? I abhor this regime. I, I, I feel that they are the most illegitimate uh, people to run a state in an in, in Iran, Iranian state because Iran needs a democratic country, a country that has the wherewithal to be a democratic country. It doesn't need to spend all its money on arming the IRGC when the Iranian people are having a, a tremendously difficult time with, with their life. The Iranians don't want, Iranian people do not, do not want a war in the Middle East. They don't want to support the proxies of the, of the, of the IRGC or the, or the regime. They, they want to live a normal, decent life with democratic institutions. And the women of Iran want to be free, and they don't need a head job to be free. Thank you, Barry. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, I'd only say that, uh, inshallah, one day, Iran will be free. Thank you so much, Ed's, uh, Barry Rosen, joining us today. Thank you, Barry.